Let's take a look at equilibria that uh, involve solids or liquids, right? Uh, there are a lot of reactions uh, like this because a lot of reactions take place in solutions. And in solutions, when we write equations for reactions in solution, uh, remember, uh, for example, in aqueous solution, we often end up uh, with water showing up as either a reactant or a product, right? And that water that appears in the equation then is, is a liquid. Uh, an example would be the uh, dissociation of ammonia in, uh, in an aqueous solution, right? Ammonia is a weak base. Uh, that was uh, one of our first examples of something where we met up with that two-way arrow to describe equilibrium. Uh, the equilibrium ex equation looks like uh, what's written there, right? Uh, ammonia uh, dissolved in water but still intact, uh, reacting with water molecules, uh, ammonium ions and hydroxide ions on the right-hand side. And we said uh, a long time ago that we'd expect to get some ions on the right, some uh, uh, intact ammonia and water on the left. Our, our solution would have uh, all of those things present in it, right? So if I asked you right now to write an equilibrium constant for that expression, uh, it's a pretty safe bet uh, based on my experience that uh, a, a large majority of you would write the one that's on the screen right now. Uh, that would mean you took our products minus reactant, our products over reactants expression, sorry, uh, for the equilibrium constant in general and just plugged in the things that are in your equation. The thing that's sort of odd about this uh, is that uh, here it includes the concentration of water. Okay, uh, water is after all, a, a, it's a liquid, it's a pure substance, right? It doesn't have a variable concentration. Right? Uh, if someone, if you pick up a glass of water, you don't ask what's the molarity of the water because right? it's always the same. Uh, it's about 55 and a half. Uh, you can calculate that from the density if you're curious. Right? Because of that, this term, the concentration of liquid water uh, is not changing as anything happens. And so we usually drop that or a more proper way to do that would be to say that it's just kind of folded into the constant side of things right? because it's not changing. As a result, if we look and write the equilibrium constant for that reaction, uh, it is uh, universally written in the form that is here, where it just does not include the water term. All right. Uh, this particular equilibrium constant also sometimes is given a, a special uh, designation. Uh, it's called Kb, uh, where B just stands for base. So that's the ionization or dissociation constant for a weak base. Uh, if you see that Kb, that's what that means. You also see Ka occasionally, which is the same expression, but for a weak acid. Uh, so if you look up the equilibrium constant for any of these uh, weak acid, weak base dissociations, they're going to be tabulated assuming that you're not putting the water piece in there. Okay, that's important. The thing that's special about it is not that it's water, uh, it's that it's a liquid, right? If you look back uh, over the, uh, the previous video, uh, I'm fairly certain I did an example that had H2O in it uh, in, the expression, in the equation and in the equilibrium expression. Uh, the difference there was that was a reaction at an elevated temperature where everything was a gas. Uh, for a gas, uh, the concentration, the number of moles per liter definitely changes if you change the pressure or the volume or the temperature. So it's got to be uh, in there explicitly in the expression, right? Uh, but liquids or solids, you won't see too many solids in uh, this class in an equilibrium expression, I, I would imagine. But uh, those are essentially just uh, disappeared from the equilibrium constant. Let's do an example for this. Uh, this is the dissociation of acetic acid. That was our uh, standard example for a weak acid uh, way back in chapters three and four. Uh, here we're going to finally get to the point where we can calculate how much of a solution uh, is dissociated and how much of it is intact. Okay. Uh, just uh, so we're uh, straight on this, let's start by writing what the expression would be for this. I'm going to write it as the concentration of the hydronium ions times the concentration of the acetate ions uh, all over the concentration of the uh, undissociated acetic acid, right? Again, the water term does not show up in there, okay? Uh, we're going to take a 0.1 molar solution, which just means uh, the overall concentration, there's 0.1 moles per liter uh, of uh, acetic acid that we dissolve, right? Then it's going to start to dissociate. It's going to uh, put some of it on each side. We're going to figure out how much. So what I want to do, I already have my expression there. I'll bring that back in a second. I want to set up my table, right? Because that's how I do each and every equilibrium problem is I write up this uh, table, the so-called ice chart, uh, which says what I'm going to call the initial situation is I have 0.1 molar here, right? That just says, I'm pretending I can uh, dissolve that 0.1 mole per liter. And before it has a chance to start dissociating, I just say, that's my initial state. It's all on the uh, intact side, okay? Uh, if it's all over there, then there's nothing over here. So those are zero. 
my changes, uh, there's nothing on the right-hand side. So I can't take stuff away from the ion side. I have to put stuff there if it reacts, right? So there's going to be minus, plus, and plus for signs. Uh, the stoichiometry is one-to-one -one for all of those things. So they're all just going to be minus x and plus x. That means at equilibrium, uh, I'll have 0.1 minus x, I'll have x, and I'll have x again. So now let me rewrite my uh, K, uh, A expression, right? Uh, I said it was equal to H3O plus the acetate ions And we know it's equal to 1.8 times 10 to the minus five because that was given to us. And now we also know that from our table, it's equal to X squared because that's X times X for the two ion concentrations over 0.1 minus X for the uh, acid concentration, all right? If we get to that point, uh, the uh, good news is we've done all the chemistry work, right? What's left in front of us is just a little bit of algebra. Okay, uh, it is a quadratic equation, right? Because we have an x squared, uh, there's no uh, obvious way to simplify that. Uh, so one approach to this is to solve the quadratic formula. Okay, uh, I'm not going to write out the steps for doing that. Uh, you all learned the quadratic formula some number of years ago uh, in your uh, math careers. Uh, and although you might be haven't done it for a while, it would work. Uh, if I do this, I would get, I will show you a little trick to avoid this uh, in most cases, including this one in a second. Uh, if I do this, I would get roots for x that say x is 0.00133 uh, or it's minus. 0.00135, according to my notes over there, okay? Of those two roots, so now I have two roots, right? And I have a concentration that's supposed to be equal to x. So that's a little bit of a problem. Uh, this one can't be right, right? Because it's got a minus sign, right? So that one we drop. Uh, this is what should be our concentration of the ions. Suppose I don't want to do the quadratic formula, okay? Uh, I can sometimes, but not always, escape from it uh, if I'm willing to be a little bit clever. Uh, I confess, uh, people don't uh, learn or teach uh, some of these sort of tricks as much anymore, uh, just because calculators make doing the quadratic formula a lot more palatable than uh, it was uh, when I first learned how to do that a long, long time ago. But if I don't want to do that, I can say, well, 10 to the minus 5 is the equilibrium constant. It's not very big, right? Uh, so the amount of stuff that's going to end up uh, going over to the right-hand side should be pretty small, okay? Uh, so I could try saying that if uh, 0.1 minus x, if x is very small, then 0.1 minus x will still be close to 0.1, okay? We can cheat a little bit. We can say that's pretty much true, right? Because over here, I found my value of x. It's 0.001. Uh, 0.1 minus 0.001 is not that far from being 0.1. Uh, if I do that, if I'm willing to do that, then I would get uh, 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5 uh, equals x squared, or is approximately equal to x squared over 0.1, right? That's much easier to solve uh, because that would give me 1.8 times 10 to the minus 6 is now x squared, uh, which leads to x equals 0.1. 00134, according to my notes, okay? Uh, if you do anything like that, make an approximation like that, uh, when I get to the end, what I should do is check and see, am I satisfied that my approximation was okay? So suppose I hadn't done this piece over here. Uh, if I didn't know that, so I didn't actually know what number it, it, it gets if I, I did the formula for it, then I would look at this and I would say, well, I said, essentially here, I assumed that X was a lot smaller than 0.1. I get an answer that's 0.001, I'm probably willing to say that's a lot smaller than 0.1, right? So my assumption doesn't seem bad. If I had made this assumption up here, and then when I got down here, it said x equaled uh, 0.05, then I'd have to say, well, my approximation was pretty lousy, right? Uh, it didn't uh, come out to be anywhere near uh, being negligible, so I'd want to say I better go back and, and do the problem uh, the, using the quadratic formula. Uh, is it worth doing that? That's, that's up to you how much you hate doing the quadratic formula, uh, things like that. Uh, it's just a way that I learned to do things uh, back when, when doing the quadratic formula was, was uh, a lot more uh, 
traumatic because uh, that square root piece is pretty rough if you don't have a calculator after all. One more thing to look at, uh, and that's uh, the idea of vapor pressure, okay? Uh, and, and this is just uh, really to make a point uh, and uh, say this idea that liquids don't show up in equilibrium constants has other implications as well, right? Uh, so there's an equation written there right there uh, for the evaporation of methanol, which is essentially just a randomly chosen liquid here, right? Uh, but uh, if I have a closed container that has some liquid in it, right? So I evacuate it, so there's nothing else in there to begin with. I put a lid on it. Uh, it's got some liquid down here, right? So there's going to be some liquid, and then there's going to be vapor up above it, right? Uh, when it gets to equilibrium, uh, that means that the, that reaction up there is in equilibrium, right? I have uh, the rate of evaporation and the rate of condensation have to be equal, okay? And at some point that will happen. If I start off with only liquid and I pump all the uh, other stuff out of the container, in the beginning some liquid will be evaporating, but then it'll uh, reach an equilibrium where uh, the level of the liquid won't change anymore, right? If you write an equilibrium constant for that reaction, what does it say? It says the equilibrium constant is nothing but the concentration of the gas, okay? Uh, because liquid concentration does not appear in the equilibrium constant, just like for liquid water, right? Remember, the thing about water that's special is not that it's water, it's that it's a liquid. Remember these concentrations, this is moles per liter, right? Which means it's N over V in terms of the gas law, right? Uh, and that means uh, that it's uh, P over RT, all right? Uh, so that says that uh, if the molarity, uh, that concentration term is fixed, then the pressure will have to be fixed as well, as long as the temperature stays constant, right? That's what we call a vapor pressure. Uh, that says that uh, in a closed container at a particular temperature, the pressure of that vapor will always be the same, no matter how much liquid is in the container. That'll feel a little weird to you, but uh, it's definitely true. Right? Uh, as an example, for water around room temperature, the vapor pressure I happen to know was about 23 torr. Uh, and so uh, in a closed container with liquid water in it, there's always a vapor pressure, a pressure of water vapor of about 23 torr. Uh, that's what a vapor pressure means. And any liquid has a characteristic vapor pressure. Uh, the uh, vapor pressure obviously depends on the strength of those intermolecular forces, right? So the weaker those forces are, the higher the vapor pressure would be at a particular temperature. Uh, stronger forces would make uh, a lower vapor pressure.